All right, so um, let's pick up where we left off last time. So we were, just to remind you what we were doing, we have a theorem, which, I, which is numbered 820 in the notes, which is if we have a, an irreducible uh, Markov chain on a finite state space, so we let x be irreducible on a finite space x, then x has a unique stationary distribution. this pi and if in addition to being irreducible x is aperiodic then we have the stronger statement um, if x is also aperiodic then we also have that the limit Holds uh, for all x and x and all initial distributions new. So remember, this notation means that the um, this is the distribution of the state at time n under initial distribution new, and this is saying that the chain. This is what it means for the chain to be ergodic, which is that the marginal distribution settles down to the stationary distribution uh, as time goes to infinity. And we talked in the last class of, um, of the difference between these two cases uh, where uh, in the first case, effectively this pi, so the stationary distribution pi is just telling us the limiting frequency of time, limiting amount of time that we spend in each state. And we had the example being, uh, if we have a chain that jumps with probability one between two states, so this is an aperiodic finite state, oh no, this is an irreducible finite state Markov chain. It has period two, so it's not aperiodic, but it does have a unique stationary distribution, and the stationary distribution in this case is going to be half, half. Okay, and you can easily verify that that's stationary. Um, but it doesn't satisfy the stronger result because, in particular, it's a deterministic chain. This limit will not exist. Um, this limit won't exist for all initial distributions. In particular, if we always start in state zero, this limit's not going to exist. Okay. Okay. So what we proved last time was the special case... Um, which was if pij is strictly positive for all j. So if all of the uh, transition probabilities are strictly positive, um, if all of the transition probabilities are strictly positive, then um, We've, we showed that this holds. So for, you know, first of all, if, if all the probabilities are strictly positive, then we have an aperiodic chain because uh, the chain will have period one because every state has a positive probability of staying where it's at in one step. So it's aperiodic. We assume it's, a, it's irreducible. And so the argument that we made was that the, the mapping that takes any distribution nu to nu p, this is a strict contraction. And then by observing that it's a strict contraction, it implies that there's going to be a unique fixed point. That's by the uh, fixed point theorem, uh, contraction mapping theorem. And that unique fixed point in the space of probability distributions is the stationary distribution. Uh, so just visually what's going on 
is we, when we have a finite um, state space, the space of, prob space of probability measures is the simplex. And so this is the one dimensional simplex. This is the line. If we're talking about distributions on two points, this is the line so that each point here, so if this is x, this is the point x, one minus x. So these are the space of distrib this is the space of probability distributions on a set of two elements. And what this operation here has the effect of doing is that we initially might start in any distribution on this line, but when we apply this operation once, we contract the space. And so after one step, the space of possibilities might be only those that fall on this part of the line. And then after another step and another one, and we saw that this is geometrically contracting, and it's geometrically contracting to a fixed point, and that's the stationary distribution. What we want to do now is we want to generalize this to the to the case where the entries are not all positive. So it's it's possible, of course, to have an aperiodic chain for which some of the entries might be zero. And in order to show this, uh, the general strategy here is to say, well, we're going to make use of the special case that we've already seen. The way that we're going to do that is by observing a lemma. And um, what the lemma says is that if we let P be the transition probability matrix of an aperiodic and irreducible Markov chain on X, say it's finite, then there exists some, some time point, uh, there exists some time M such that P to the power M, the M step transition probabilities have, has strictly positive entries. Okay. And the proof of this is in the notes. The actual proof is a bit technical and it's in the notes, but the intuition for this um, should, be, should be clear um, by the definition, really, because we have an irreducible markup chain meaning that all states communicate. So we know that for any two states, there is a, um, so for any two states, x and x prime, there is some path with positive probability that takes us from x to x prime, and there's a path with positive probability that takes us back from x prime to x. And this is true for all states. So that means for all pairs of states, there's some n, some m, that is going to, for which the entry of pm is positive in the, in, this, in the entry xx prime. And then we have to use the aperiodicity of the chain to deduce that there would be a common m, right? That there's a common m among them at which some point in the future it's possible to be in any state. Uh, and there is such, and there is such an M, and that's um, part of the proof that's in the notes. Okay. Okay. Um, but what we want to do now is we want to use this lemma to prove the general theorem, and so the proof of a twenty, or at least the second part of a twenty, um, assuming a periodicity. Um, so how do we prove that? Well, by the lemma. Okay, so the lemma, well, this lemma A, lemma A implies that there's some M 
such that PM has positive entries. Okay. So what we can do now is since that M is well defined, whatever that M is, let's define Q to be P to the M. So Q is a stochastic matrix. So Q is a transition probability matrix for some Markov chain. And we can imagine then just looking at a Markov chain that only just filtering out the chain and only looking at the jumps at intervals, time increments of time n, m. So we go m, 2m, 3m. That's a, this, would, this would be its transition matrix. It has all strictly positive entries, so we know that this holds. So it has, so q, so there exists some q, there exists a unique high such that pi is stationary for Q. That's by, um, so by, you know, theorem 320, call that 320 star. That's the special case that we talked about. So there's some candidate for, for a, uh, a measure or a, a, um, a limiting distribution. And moreover, what we know is that the limit of new PNM equals pi for all for all initial distributions new. So that's just this statement here in the case that PN and then we have to PM and then we raise it to the power N. Be a little bit, little bit clear about this. Okay. Okay. And notice that. And note that. For any new. So for any new. Um, the action of nu times p, nu p1, nu p squared, etc., nu p m minus 1 are also initial distributions. So the notation distribution of x. So that means that we can put these in for new here. And so that gives us the, the limit of say new PK, which is some initial distribution, P to the M N, which is Q to the power N. So this is the limit P N M plus K equals pi or all K. So this tells us that all subsequence converge, all subsequence, all arithmetic progressions of this sequence from K equals zero up to M minus one converge, okay? So then what we have from this is that all the all subsequences, so the subsequences P to the N M plus K. Converge to pi for 
a equals zero to m minus one. And so that's that's the first step. And it follows then that pi is a stationary distribution. So pi is a stationary distribution. Because what we need to show is that this limit actually holds for the sequence itself. And so I'll just write this down as a fact that for a sequence, given a sequence say V sub n if all subsequences and we'll say if all sequ if all subsequences v sub m n plus k converge to the same limit for k equals zero and up to m minus one, so there's finitely many of these k's, then, uh, let's see, the same limit L, then the sequence itself converges to L. Okay, and I'll leave that as an exercise. That's Again, that's an exercise in real analysis, but once you have this, what we have is that, therefore, the sequence itself converges to pi, and pi is a stationary distribution, and in particular, uh, to show uniqueness, so we need to show uniqueness, so we have existence, now to show uniqueness, let's say, um, let's let mu be a candidate pi p. So we know that that's stationary. Okay. Uh, and by definition, mu q equals pi p p to the m which is pi okay. but we know that q has a unique stationary distribution okay so that means that mu must equal pi okay because u because pi is unique for q, and therefore pi must be unique for p. Okay. All right. So that concludes that theorem. What we what we need to uh, what we need to still show is the existence of a stationary distribution, and I'm going to show that um, in the next uh, in the next video. All right. So um, what we did uh, we just showed that the that an aperiodic irreducible markup chain on a finite space has a unique stationary distribution, well, that an irreducible Markov chain has a unique stationary distribution, and that further, if it's aperiodic, then the chain is ergodic, meaning that it's uh, the distribution, the limiting distribution um, holds, this limiting statement holds for all initial distributions. Um, to finish off this discussion, I, I, I want to show actually the existence of a stationary distribution for any finite state Markov chain. Uh, so it may not be unique, but it does exist, um, and we can show that. And then I want to get into uh, recurrence and transients for Markov chains. So the, the theorem
that I call, or that's called the Krilov. Bogolyubov theorem. Is that any finite state Markov chain has a stationary distribution? And so for proving this, um, of course, we've already shown it for irreducible chains, but we may not have, sometimes we might be dealing with a reducible Markov chain. Um, so simple example of this, um, well, let's prove it first. Okay. So how am I going to prove this? Uh, well, let's let... P be the transition probabilities for the chain. And let nu be any initial distribution. New is any initial distribution on the state space, and lets us def and and what we can do then is we can define a sequence. We're going to define a sequence of measures. Um, so we're going to define a sequence new sub n as the averages, the Cesaro averages, what they're called, of the first n. marginal distributions. Okay, so what I do is I take J, I, I have the initial distribution nu, and I take a, I take J steps according to P, and that's going to give me a distribution on the state space. I do this for all J from 1 to N, and I just take the average. Okay, and since each one of these is a distribution, I'm dividing by N, and so I get a distribution back. So each one of these is a probability distribution on the state space. And therefore, we've defined a sequence, nu n, and px, so nu n is a sequence in the space of measures on x. x is finite. Uh, x is a finite state space, so we already showed that this is in correspondence with the n minus one dimensional simplex, which is a compact set. We've already shown it's a compact space under the total variation metric. And so Bolzano wire stress from real analysis, this the Bolzano wire stress theorem says that if we're in a compact compact space Every sequence has a convergent subsequence. So Bolzano wire stress implies that a subsequence of new that converges to somewhere pi. Okay? So let's consider this limit, whatever it is. So let's let pi be that limit, and let's show, so we need to show that this is a stationary distribution for p. Okay, so we need to show pi p equals pi. All right. So we've already shown that, um, so we consider the map, right? The map that we're considering here 
is the map that takes any distribution new to new p. Right? This is a map on the simplex or on the space of measures. And this map we've already shown is Lipschitz continuous. That was shown when we proved. Uh, so you could modify that argument that we made for uh, to show that it was a strict contraction in the irreducible case, just to show that it is Lipschitz continuous in general, um, meaning that the distance between two points here cannot increase when you apply this p. Okay, uh, so it's Lipschitz continuous, therefore it's continuous, and so that means that the input we can put the limit in for the input. So uh, this pi of p is equal to the limit nu and k p. And by definition, so now the rest just follows by definition, by definition of nu, this is nk inverse sum of nu to the p, this is i equals 1 to the nu k, times p. This is the limit. So this is the limit as nk goes to infinity, nk inverse, sum from i equals 1 to nk. These just come back, come to give us a pi plus 1. Okay, so this is actually a sum from 2 to nk plus 1, but I want to write it different, so I want to write it like this and add the and subtract. Okay, and the reason I want to do that is when I take k to infinity, nk goes to as k goes to infinity, nk goes to infinity. This goes to zero, so this is going to zero. And we're left with this limit, but this limit is just pi. So we have that pi is stationary for p. Okay. So that is the krilov bogolyubov theorem that shows that there's a there exists a stationary distribution for every finite state uh, chain. Okay, so now I want to move on to uh, recurrence and transients. Okay. So um, we talked, when we talked before um, about random walks, we talked about recurrence and transients. So simple random walk on the integers, go up with probability half, down with probability half, up one step, up one unit with probably half, down with probably half. We showed that that um, revisits its initial state, revisits the origin infinitely often with probability one, and that's the property of recurrence. But we also showed that the expected amount of time it takes to uh, return was infinite, and we gave some heuris well, we, we proved that, but we also gave some heuristic understanding of how that was possible in that case. Um, and that was in, note that that's a Markov chain, but it's on an accountable state space, not a finite space. Okay. Uh, we also showed that in the case where it's a bias random walk, so maybe probability P of going up, probability Q, 1 minus P of going down, where P is, say, bigger than a half, that the chain is not recurrent. There's a positive probability that the chain escapes, and the chain will revisit its initial position with uh, only finitely often with probability one. Okay, we we proved that using, for example, the strong law of large numbers, knowing that uh, by the property for a simple random walk, so a simple random walk, we had so biased 
say p bigger than a half, then what's happening is the chain is going up and down, but by the strong law of large numbers, in the limit, with probability one, all of the points are going to lie in some cone, in some region, and that region is going to be separated from zero. Okay, so there's some point at which we don't drop below that with probability one, and so it's it's only the only possibility is that we revisit uh, with we revisit finitely often to the origin. Um, but the way we prove that, so using the strong law of large numbers, we could use that because the way that the chain is constructed, the process is constructed by these independent uh, Rademacher increments. Okay. In general, for Markov chains, we don't have that structure, but we can still talk about this concept. Okay. So we say that a Markov chain is so here. Okay. So remember we define the, the we define the stopping time. So stopping time um, so let let's define T X as the first time that the chain visits x and for general k we're going to define this as the first time after tk minus 1 that we visit x. So these are the kth passage times. So these are the kth passage times to x in the chain x. So the kth passage time meaning that assuming we started in x, we wait until the first time we revisit x. That's tx. And then for any such k, this is for k bigger than 1. After we've revisited x for the k minus first time, we define the k passes time as the next time that we revisit, revisit x. Okay. So Txk, so observe, so this is just a fact, Txk is a stopping time. for all x and k. Uh, so remember what a stopping time is, is that it's a random variable that is a function of, well, that it's a random variable that you can evaluate by knowing just by only looking into the past. Or you know whether the time has happened by only looking into the past. So uh, just quick to prove this is that for any m, say, bigger than or equal to 1, the event that tx, let's do it for k equals to 1, the event that the first time to visit state x is equal to m is equal to, well, in order to visit state x at time m, we need xm to equal x. And in order for it to be the first time, we need xj to not equal x for every j prior to time m. So this is just xm equals x intersect. Uh, yes, so intersection of this okay. and this is measurable with respect to so I'll use this notation to say it's measurable with respect to um, let's just say xm to x0 and that's what it means to be a stopping time
Okay, so these are stopping times, and we'll make use of that um, in a little bit. Okay. But now, using this, this definition, um, oh, the other thing that I'll write is, I used this, I used this before, was I define the notation P x um, say tx equals m this is the conditional distribution of the first time to reach x conditional on a chain starting in x and as we used before when I index by a measure this is an average over all states of the first time that the chain uh, visits x, given that it started in state x prime. Okay. All right. So a Markov chain x is called. So we say that x is recurrent. So x is called recurrent if the probability of revisiting its initial state is 1. So if we revisit the initial state in finite time, that's what it means to revisit the state. Uh, we call it positive recurrent if its expectation, if the expectation of the amount of time it takes to revisit the initial state is finite, it's null recurrent if it is recurrent, but the expected amount of time to revisit is infinite, and it's transient if there is some probability that the chain never, revis never revisits its initial state. So those are the uh, basic definitions. Okay. And what we want to do is we want to show, give some conditions under which um, a chain is positive recurrent, null recurrent, and so on. So in, in, this, in this terminology, simple random walk is, so simple random walk is null recurrent. And the biased random walk is transient. Okay. All right. Uh, first thing, though, we want to show is the is the strong Markov property. So remember that the strong Markov property says that uh, if we take any let t be any stopping time. For a Markov chain for X, a discrete time Markov chain X, then the pre and post T process are conditionally independent given T and the state at evaluated at the stopping time, and the post T process is a version of the initial. So um, in particular, um, then let's say x t plus m r con is conditionally independent and let's say x0, 
xt minus 1 are conditionally independent given t and xt. And the process afterwards, xt plus m is behaves as as the initial chain with initial state x p okay so that's the strong markup property and that's that holds for the chains that we're talking about here, uh, and we're going to prove that. Uh, so once we just take a second to digest that definition. All right. Well, the proof of this actually is straightforward because it just follows by the definition of t as a stopping time and the usual Markov property because Let's see, t is stopping time. Plus the markup property. And that's because, and the, the, the full proof is in the notes, but since t is a markup, uh, uh, since t is a stopping time, if we condition on t and the entire past of the of the of the uh, process that that's only that only depends on the past of the process because t is a measurable function and so conditioning on t and the past is the same as conditioning on the past and by the markup property we know that this independence holds and um, we further know that once we do that and we condition on the on the past and we know what the current state is that the next state only depends on the present state um, and so you can look, look into the notes for the full argument, but that's, that's the idea. And so what we can do is we can actually use this. We can make quite a bit of use of this. All right. All right, and the first thing to show is, so one of the properties that has been popping up again, and that pops up again and again when we study uh, stochastic processes is this is regenerative structure. Uh, Markov chains have a regenerative, a regenerative structure, time homogeneous Markov chains do. When you revisit a state, um, let's say we start the process in state X, so remember when we had a market, when we had a, let me just draw this over here. I'll keep that definition up. Um, well, when we had a simple random walk, we knew that every time we return to zero, it's like this, it's like the walk starts over because of the uh, Markov property. Uh, that's the same in the case of a Markov chain. Uh, and so the first thing is if we let X be a Markov chain, with k passage times t x k or k bigger than or equal to 1 then the distribution of the kth passage time being finite probability of the kth passage time being finite is just the first passage probability raised to the kth power. So in other words, this is a geometric distribution. The number of times that I revisit a given state is a geometric random variable. 
Um, and that kind of, that should make sense again, by the Markov property, once I get to a state for the kth time, whether I come back again, shouldn't depend on the past. It only depends on the future. It's independent. Um, it's a memoryless, uh, memoryless property, memoryless process. Okay. And the way that we can show this is by induction. because k equals 1 is automatic. I put k equals 1 here. This is just a true statement. Um, for k bigger than, for, so if we assume for, assume it holds for some k larger than 1, and let's consider, and let's fix for now, some m bigger than or equal to 1, then the probability that the k plus first return time is m plus n, given that the kth time is n, Well, by the strong Markov property, this is just the, we can deduce that this is just the probability that the first return time is equal to m. Okay. And if we sum up over all, uh, is this what I want? This is the probability that the first return time is equal to m. That's right. And by summing up, so if I take the sum here over all values of m and the sum here over all values of m, then what I'm left with is the probability that cx k plus 1 is finite given cx k equals n is just equal to the probability that the first return time is finite okay. for all n. For all n. This is true for all values of n. And so now I can, to prove what we want to prove, we just use the law of total probability, the probability that the kth return time is finite by law of total probability is the probability over all possible values of the kth return time times the conditional probability that the k plus first return time is finite given the kth return time. Okay? We've already shown, we've already ca calculated this. It doesn't depend on n, so it's just the probability that the first return time is finite. Sum n equals 1 to infinity of the probability over all values of the kth return time. This is the probability over all values n from 1 run to infinity of the kth return time. This is just the probability that the kth return time is finite. By the induction hypothesis, which by the induction hypothesis gives us
this expression and we multiply them together to get the answer. Okay. okay. So we can express the uh, probability of returning to the to any given state k times in terms of the probability of returning to it once. And there's a few immediate corollaries to this. So the first corollary is if So first simple observation, if x is recurrent, then it's going to return to any state. So if, if x is a recurrent state, or chain x, then the chain will, given that it starts at, at x, it will revisit the state infinitely often with probability 1. Okay. And let's see. So if it's a recurrent state, yeah. So proof. So because it's recurrent, the probability that it returns uh, in a finite amount of time is 1, and so the event that x returns to x infinitely often is just the event that all of these, so it's the event that all of these kth passage times are finite. Okay? And so the complement of this event, the probability that it only returns finitely often, is the complement of this event. So we have a union of the complementary events, which is that one of these one of these return times is infinite. And the probability, and we just, probability of this complementary event is the probability of a union. Probability of a union, we get a union bound over all k of the probability that Txk is infinite. Since it's a recurrent, since x is a recurrent state, all of these probabilities are zero. They add up, so they, they add up to zero by countable additivity. So the probability of the complementary event is zero. The probability of the event must be one. All right. So this is actually a precursor to a more general uh, statement, stronger statement, which is if x is a recurrent state, so x is recurrent for x, so x is a recurrent state for the chain x, if and only if the expected number of returns to the state is infinite, where uh, nx is the Well, we can define it as the sum from k equals, well, how do I define it? Um, yeah, 
let's not do it. It's the sum from k equals 1 to infinity of xk. So it's just the number of times we visit x in this chain. So the proof, we've already showed that if it's recurrent, then it re returns infinitely often with probability one. If it returns infinitely often with probability one, then it must have, then the number of times it visits must be infinite. Okay. So that's, uh, so let's see, this direction is um, done. And we actually didn't need to do it because what we'll show now actually works in both directions. So to show this, what we can do is we can express, so we want to use this, so we can use the previous uh, theorem where we express the kth passes distribution in terms of the first passes distribution. Okay, and let's notice that we can express the number of times, so let's write the number of times that the chain visits state x, given that we started in x. Okay, so if we start in state x, then we must visit state x at least once, but then for each k after that, we can, there's a couple ways we can count this. One, we can count it by just running the chain and seeing how many times we visit. So that's the definition, okay? But another way to do it is to count how many of the case passage times are finite, right? So if the case passage time is finite, but the k plus first time passage time is infinite, then there will not be any k plus second or k plus third and so on passage time. And so what we'll be doing is we'll be adding up a one for the first k of these because if the kth time is finite, the k minus first is finite, k minus second is finite and so on. And so, uh, yeah, okay. That, that actually, I, I realized that I, Earlier on, I, I must have defined the case passes time wrong. Okay, so let me, uh, and we've been using the right definition, but I actually gave the wrong definition. So let me uh, clarify that. Okay, case passage time. It's pretty obvious what the mistake was, but we define Tx to be the first time at which the chain visits x, txk, say txk plus 1, is the first, well, this is what we defined it as, if I remember correctly, um, is the first time after the kth passage time that the chain visits x. So this is what we defined it as, but actually what we need to do is we need to add the time. Okay, so these are cumulative. Okay. All right, so now with this definition, uh, if we compute the expectation of the number of times that we visit x, given that we start in x, it's gonna be one plus the expectation of this sum. So we have an expectation of an infinite sum. We want to flip the order of the sum. These are not negative, so Tonelli's theorem, Fabini Tonelli, uh, allows us to do that. So we get one plus a sum of an expectation of an indicator. That's a probability. And what we're left with is I can, I'm going to absorb this. So we know what this is equal to. We've already computed this. So I'm going to absorb the one into this sum at index zero by raising 
this to the power k. So the zeroth power is just one. Everything else is equal to this by this previous theorem. And now this is a geometric sum. So this is equal to one over one minus the probability that the first pass is time is finite, which is one over the probability that the first pass is time is infinite. So the expected number of visits is equal to one over the probability that it's infinite. So the number of visits will be infinite only if the denominator here is zero, which means that the probability of returning must be one, making it a recurrent chain. And if the chain is recurrent, this will be zero and this will be infinite. All right. Okay, let's see. So do we have one more? Maybe one more. Okay, so Okay, I actually think I want to stop here, um, but what I'm going to do, what we're going to do next time, so we've showed that the number of visits to a state are, is finite only if the state is transient. So conversely, if the, if the probability is finite, then this will be, if the probability is less than one, then this will be finite. So if the probability is less than one, it means it's a transient chain, and the expected number of visits is finite. So what, what we're going to show next time is that these transients and recurrence properties, so here we're talking about a specific state that is recurrent, uh, transients and recurrence properties are class properties. Specifically what I mean by that is that if we have a, um, we have all these states in the chain, in the state space, suppose that X is a recurrent state, and that x prime communicates with x. So first it's accessible from x prime. And not only it's accessible from x prime and x is accessible from x prime as well. x prime is accessible from x. So if x is recurrent, that means that I come back to x infinitely often with probability one. Every time, and, and since x communicates with x prime, Every time I reach x, there's a chance that I'm going to hit x prime before my next return to x. There's, a, there's some path that allows me to possibly get to x prime with positive probability. I may not get there on every, on every, these are called excursions away from x, okay? And so on every, on every time I revisit x, there's a chance I get back, I get to x prime before coming back to x. But every time I get to x prime, I will eventually get back to x. I know that because it's a recurrent state. So every time I revisit x, there's some probability. And so then it's just a matter of how many, how, you know, do I hit x prime or not? But that's a geometric process. And so eventually I will hit it. Um, and so if I revisit x, x infinitely often, I'm guaranteed to visit x prime uh, infinitely often. Okay. And that's what we'll talk about. Um, next time.